ay mam jara jata man mam jara jata man mam jara jata du a fam da mangi wiral ne mangi wiral ne i'll speak the truth dina wax diga dina wax diga the whole truth diga bi yeb diga bi yeb and nothing but the truth duma fi wax lenen ludud diga duma fi wax lenen ludud diga Good afternoon Ms. Jata, welcome to the TRRC. Ms. Jata mangla nuyu di la dalal TRRC. Jere gen jef. Thank you all. Jere jef, thank you for um coming at such short notice and cooperating with the TRRC. Jere jef ci li nga nangu ñew ci diir bu gatta ak li nga nangul TRRC. Ñoko bokka. We are in it together. I know that you speak English very well, but you've opted to testify in Wolof so that um, it can reach a wider audience. Hamna ne mun nga lak angale bu baax waye nak da nga tan pour wax ci Olof pour nak ñu bari mun ko deg. Therefore, please wait for the interpretation um, before you start responding to my questions. Ci ko lolu nak buma la laaje be pare na nga xaar bañ lapato ko nga door ma tontu. Waaw ba no. That's good. In order to make yourself more com yourself more comfortable, please feel free to draw the mic um, closer to you so that you're seated in a comfortable position. Pour nga mëna tok to gaay bu jekk, ci ciel microphone bi mu ñew gën la jégué. During your testimony, well let me start differently. We met this morning, so you know my name is Horeja Balagé. Bi santé woon nañ tay ci suba, xam nga né ma ngi tudda Horeja Balagé. During your testimony, I will be asking you questions um, about what you know concerning the witch hunt theme. I mentioned the interpretation to you, so please feel free to speak slowly and allow a few seconds in between our speeches. That's fine. During your testimony today, we will cover um, a few issues regarding um, the witch hunt theme and any other information that you may have. During your testimony, I will ask questions very briefly about your background. So just your personal details. Then we will speak about your father. You'll tell us a bit about um, his own background as well as his profession. You'll give us examples of um, the type of person your father was and some of his accomplishments. We will talk about your father's condition prior to the witch hunt um, incident. And then you will tell us about what you know concerning um, the witch hunt incident as re uh, regards your father. And then we will conclude with the impact that all of this has had on your father as well as the rest of the family. Is that clear to you? Yes, it's clear. So just to begin, can you please state your full name for the record? My Ms. Jata, can you tell us when and where you, uh, you were born? My name Royal Victor Teaching Hospital. Um, 28 December 
I was born in Banjul at the Royal Victoria Teaching Hospital on the 28th of December in 1988. Can you tell us um, your father's name? Kumbajata. Kumbajata. Um, what was your father's profession? Police officer. He was a police officer. Do you know um, when and where your father was born? January. He was born in Kuntawur on the 10th of January. 1950. 1950. You're one of your father's children, but I assume he has other children as well. Yes, he has other children. Can you tell us um, your position within the family? Are you one of the oldest or the youngest? I am the youngest. Can you tell us um, about your relationship with your father? Yes. My father is my friend, is my everything. As the youngest, would you say that you are the closest to your father? Yes, I was closest to him. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your father and um, his profession as a police officer? For example, do you remember when your father enlisted into the um, police force? Yes, I know it. September 1970, so I joined Gambia Police Force. September in 1970 was when he joined the Gambia Police Force. For the people who don't know who your father, um, anything about your father as a police officer. Can you tell us what kind of a police officer he was? How was he regarded? He was an upright police officer. He loved his nation. And he loved his work as well. And he was straightforward. Would you say that your father was considered as a strict police officer? Yes, he was a strict police officer. To the extent that some people mix that with wickedness. By virtue of the straightforwardness that he exhibited during the course of his work. Can you give us some examples of what you're referring to? Yes. He was a strict police officer. Traffic police, under traffic. Working under the traffic police. Why do you not bribe? But, but he never took bribe. If he arrests you and you suggest to him that you are going to bribe him, then he will tell you that he will not release you. It went up to the extent that he did not uh, distinguish between a minister, uh, a wealthy person, or he never looked into the eyes of anyone. There was even a time where, at that time, I was not yet born. I sat with him and he told me that history. At that time, he was at the Denton Bridge. Because he took a long time at the Denton Bridge. He has a lot of history at Denton Bridge. To the extent that, 
President Jawara. President the Jawara. Late President Jawara. The late President Jawara. Muso Nanyo. Once came. Joge State House, Sigudi. From the State House in the night. Mom Kena. Him alone. Amut convoy. He did not come with any convoy. Amut Ben Bodyguard. And no bodyguard. Modern Dawal Mutum. He was driving himself. Ne Defadem. Said that he was going. Mudambasi Bridby. He came up to the bridge. Mugis for Smapa. He saw there standing Smapa, my father. Smapa Pulko. My father pulled him off the road. Munekone Manda President Jawara Muneko Hame Nala. He said to him, It is me, President Jawara. And my father said to him, Yes, I recognize you. Munekone Safanga dem Sigudi Bini, the Andalo Sakonvoy, Andalo Ben Bodyguard. And he asked the president, Sir, where are you going this night? And you are not with your bodyguard, neither are you with your convoy. President Benekodamagina Munokone, Warlo Gina. The president said to him, I am going out. But then he said to him, You don't have to go out. So undertake a convoy. If you are not with your convoy, well, that's the bodyguard, see. or your bodyguards. He said to him, Now you are going to wait here. Be ma call state guard, state house. Until I make a call to the state house. You is a convoy and bodyguard. So that they will bring you a convoy and bodyguards. President Bene Komanda, the President Jawara. The president said to him, it is me, President Jawara. Bene Kowa, why am I Johan de Galbe? He said to him, yes, but you gave me these instructions. So neglege lo lai topa. So now I am going to abide by those instructions. He said to him, this is the law of the land. Then nobody is above the law. And they nobody can. is above the law. So in fact, from what you said, he had the audacity to stop even the president at the time. Wow. Yes. And you've also told us that he didn't distinguish between ministers or people in high positions, he would stop people for any um, traffic violations while he was stationed at Denton Bridge, is that correct? Wow, Yes, because my father, that was the day that uh, he would spark hundreds of cars. New amount uh, insurance and motor well, new amount license. Those that did not have any insurance cover or whose drivers did not have valid license. Muyobol and court. And he would arrange them before the court. Beg fay halis. So that uh, they were fined and they paid. So halis will body dugay. When uh, a lot of income uh, got into the government coffers, you will come home laughing heartily. So, if you ask him, Dad, today you are happy, what is it? He will tell you, yes, because today a lot of money got into the state coffers. Because he once did it. Um, the fa pagon moto you bari, you have maintained amun insurance, ni amun I reflect, ni amun luara dem dal si moto. We once parked a lot of vehicles, some Bega of them did not have insurance, others, man, others did not have reflectors, and others also had so many things missing on them. Bega have maintained daily observer guy geneko. To the extent that that uh, activity was reported by the daily observer. The matog gis newspaper be. I. Sat down one day and saw that newspaper. But uh, Papa Kidu yo. And I asked him, Dad, is this not you? Fake up a watch a gay newspaper me. At that time, he, he came home with that newspaper. Fake up time, but one manga one primary school. At that time too, I was at the primary school. Mune one man lakai. He said to me, It's me. Mune mane halis ubari la dugal se kaya singur bise aferi muto yi ake no no. He said to me, today I put in a lot of money into state coffers through these vehicles. He said to me, that is the reason why. He said to me, but as you get older, you will get to know more. I will tell you more. As you grow old, if God allows me to live long, 
We will be constantly discussing Dina me and you. Dina hela I will teach you many things about this world. Considering how strict your father was, um, as concerns his his job at the time. What are some of the things that you would hear from people in the public about your father at the time? Many said he was wicked. Because I once got into a vehicle. Been a taxi driver. One taxi driver. I was uh, coming from the coastal road on my way to the turn table. I was there with my cousin. My niece. My niece, okay. So So he, she said about the Gambian police. She was talking about the Gambian police. police so he said they were, they were once some wicked police, uh, police officers who used to be around. Because many Inspector Jasse. One like Inspector Jasse. Fadia. Fadia. Kumba Jata, this is my papa. Kumba Jata, who happened to be my father. Fadi, um, Inspector Jasse, Dena. Inspector Jasse is late. Fadia, retired now. Fadia is retired. Why Gisud Jama? But he did not experience peace after that. Suma Papa Mingini. And uh, here was my father. So Jala te Italy. If he is to cross the road today, then I could jail come Muna could jail best you up like twenty four hours for Mu Jala Ben and Tadele. It will take him a whole day, twenty four hours to cross the road. Just as an example. And secondly, he is uh, sick almost to death and very weak. After he said that, I said to him, Well, my father, the one that you are referring to is my father. Before he mentioned my father, he had mentioned one officer that my father trained called Yunus. I think he is in Banjul. Traffic police officer. He is a traffic police officer. He said, but Yunus would be the next victim. Because he was trained by them. After he said that, I asked him, do you know Kumba? He said to me, yes, I know him. He was a wicked man. I said to him, he is my father. I said to him, if it is because of his strictness, that is why you are putting these uh, dubious allegations on him. Then you have committed a lot of sin. Because I said to him, because uh, that guy, I only know him for being straightforward. I said to him, he's a good man. I said to him, but it is because I am a woman. That is why. I said to him, but if I were a man, I I said to him, we would have killed each other today. I said to him, because I will not sit, I will stand by and watch you say these things. Then he said to me that he was going to park the vehicle so that they would beat me up. One other boy was seated in front of the vehicle. He was sitting down there quiet. When the... Uh, Push and pull, the talk was getting out of hand. He said to him, you, you are a rude driver. He said to him, this one, she's just because she's a woman, that's why. And that is why you are treating her this way. This 
that you have said, if someone had said it to your father, or said it about your father, how would you have liked it? And he said to him, but if you touch her today, it is now going to be a fight between you and me. You park the vehicle and then see. You them turn table, boy be watch see on be. We went to turn table and saw this boy alighted along the way. Bu watch see buga he man. He came down and wanted to fight with me. Niti dos suin digante. People came and separated us. Mena kote ina le jais mo baken. I said to him today, I am going to sacrifice myself to you. Lo li yep nyuko dega. All of that was hard. Bena time te madu gas mo yai muto nyujuge banjul time ijuli. One time also, I joined. I came from Bali with my mom. During you the prayer time. You do the same thing. You do the same thing. You do the same We came. So you jump Denton Bridge. We we were in the vehicle. We went up to Denton Bridge around the Gambia Ground, Gambia Ground Corporation from yeah, Banjul. Exactly. For for your motola. All of that place was filled up with vehicles. So you be what na moto yange da unanka nanka. As you come to us, Wadna, the vehicles were running at a very slow speed. We went up to the Gambia Granite Corporation. Suddenly, one woman inside the vehicle, she was sitting beside me. She said, I know it. It is Kumba that is here. That uh, son of a, a bastard. He is the one who is here parking vehicles because his prayer time is almost almost uh, close by and he's trying to get something to take home. This is what he usually does. So I I I uh, I, st I yes, I know. I told her off. Pull mobile wahbe. So that uh, she will uh, stop that talk. Because my mom was sitting in front of us and she did not hear her properly. But she continued talking. She did not heed to my advice. And I couldn't speak because if I spoke, my mom would hear me. So my mom got to hear it. My mom turned to us and asked her, who are you talking about? And, and she said to her, I am talking about Kumba Jata, the bastard. My mom asked her, was it Kumba that told you that she, he does not have anything to give to the family? She said to her, Kumba has left uh, rams at home. And she said to her, you see these uh, bags that we are holding? We are just from shopping in Banjul. She said to her, I am above you. I am tougher than you. And I am more capable than you are. If this dis discussion should get out of hand, I'll beat you almost to death. Muneko. And she said to her, Legisa, In fact, now, tegadlo, I will not even touch you. We will, will, we will get on onto the bridge. Since you said that Kumba is a bastard, so that, Madam I will go and report it to him so that you could repeat what you said in his presence. And so people started begging her to forgive her in the vehicle. And when she was talking, all of them were quiet and they allowed her to continue talking. My mom said to them, I do not want to be associated with hypocrisy. Because when she was talking, and she was saying those uh, evil things to my uh, to, to him. Nobody asked him to asked her to stop. All of you were there just watching her. And laughing underneath. 
And now you are pleading with me. Let nobody plead with me. After Madi Konyan. After I began to plead with her. Suma ya di masaga ni mane yo. Ki talks about the wah wah inya wisa bai nga bai kudu kosetan. Uhu loko dara. My mom was insulting me, telling me that this woman is sitting beside you and saying bad things about your father, and all you can do is just sit down there and watch her. Manobi. I kept quiet. Mane ko ya bala u korek. I said to her, Mom, please forgive her. When we went along the way, then then we jale Denton Bridge. We went until we crossed the Denton Bridge. You guess my papa and get to how the park mutui. We saw uh, my father standing parking vehicles. You jala. We crossed. Smaya ukodara. My mother didn't tell him anything. Jigen be new dembe si yombe mu wacha fumurata wacha. We went along the way, the woman alighted where she was not supposed to alight. All of that. I, I saw those myself. So you would say that as a result of how your father was perceived while um, working at the traffic police, people feared him? Wow. Yes. We've heard some testimonies that your father had jujus. Can you tell us about that? Yes, he was a man who had a lot of jujus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, why he felt um, the need to have all the jujus that you said and how people treated him as a result of that. Well, for the jujus, if you see why he had them, it's was because of uh, his enemies. Because it got to a stage where he himself got to know that he had a lot of enemies as a result of his work. And he was a balanta. And that too is our culture. Can you give us some examples of how people treated him because he had all those jujus? Wow. Yes. Because uh, he used to shake people's hands. I used to go with him along the highway. Most of them were officers. Army. Army. Police. Police. And others and others even. Bir banjul. Inside banjul. Or anywhere else. And the I went out with him severally. When he shook their hand. Pour nous to greet them. Nous they will withdraw their hands. Mom dafa bugare. Dafa bugon dafa bugare mom. So ko defé dafa ré né la 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 He used to well, almost want to laugh and ask you why. So la la jé nga ñu ne ko né yow da nga galaaji torop man ñeme ñu mala jox loxo. And they will tell him, no, because you have too much juju, and I am not uh, comfortable shaking your hand. He will say to you, well, it's fine, and then he will go on. Fast forwarding to um, 2009, which is when the witch hunt incident occurred. Before the incident occurred, can you um, tell us about your father's condition, um, health-wise? Well, my father was a healthy man. fit. He was a fit man too. Nul. Dark in complexion. Ponkal. And hefty. At that time, um, he would have been about 59 years old, is that correct? Wow. Yes. As a result of 
the health condition that you've just described, saying that he was um, physically fit at the time? Was he still um, moving around easily, for example? Did he um, engage in any kind of physical um, exercise, for instance? Yes, he used to go on morning runs. He used to joke also with the police in the morning in Banjul. Because early in the morning, he usually gets up. So sport where? Put on his sports wear. Um, and tell us that uh, we are going to run. Today we are going to run inside Banjul. Or we are going to the beach to run. Mm. And so this was his condition um, up until early 2009, is that right? Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you recall um, the events of the witch hunt incident in 2009? Yes, I recall. You told us that you were very close to your father. In fact, you were the one who was closest to him. Can you tell us what you recall from what he told you at the time about the witch hunt incident? Well, yes. Those individuals. One day, my father came home late. Because sometimes he goes to work very early and closes late. Mostly, he goes early in the morning and comes home late. When he falls at a uniform, when he came home in his uniform, because that day he was dressed in his, in his uniforms, he came and I asked him, Dad, what's it? I said to him, today your uniform is uh, flat and it used to be bulky. He laughed. He said to me, today, my jujus were taken away from me. I asked, your jujus? And he said to me, yes. I asked, who are those? He said, there are others. There were all people who were uh, said to come from Guinea-Conakry. Who were said to come from Guinea-Conakry. They were dressed in red. And they had their drums. I said, how? He said to me, well, I was sitting in my office. They had called for a parade, and uh, they were outside. But I did not go out. I was sitting in my, sitting in my office. He said, while, while I was sitting there, I was sitting there, Jesus and Sabaji. All of a sudden, I saw Ensa Baji, Jesus. I also saw RSM Koli. He came inside with others who had red caps and others in plain clothes. They said to him that the man said to him that they needed his judges. My father said to them, I cannot give you my jujus. But they forced him to do it forcefully. That was uh, when he dressed, he undressed in front of them. Because my father's waist and the top of his uh, chest and his uh, cap all of those had jujus. That was how he undressed. 
in front of them, all of them, and they were all standing, and gave them to them. But there was one juju which he normally puts inside his paws. It has a red cloth. How many could describe why Nila def? We am I chapney many how my bejin la how madal am na the monduru. It has some pointed uh, stuff which I cannot describe. Looks looks like a horn. Because the makodan fix all uniform and be swore them the gay suba. Because I used to fix up his uniforms when he's about to go to work in the morning. The majanga lo nuno fix a uniform with policeyo. He had taught me how to fix his police uniform. The costra saldara. And also to polish his shoes. So my guess and theory. Each time I saw that juju, I will ask him, Daddy, what is this? He will tell me, why don't you go and learn and train how to become a journalist? You can ask questions. He will laugh and tell me, but I will tell you. He will say to me, this thing was given to me by my father. He will laugh at me. Laugh and say nobody will be able to do anything to you. Ni, no ni, do you Tell me your, your enemies will not be able to do anything to you. Ko, ah, okay. I said to him, well, okay. Galaj, bobo, no, no. Now that juju, be jel, yop, after they took everything from him, Gai, buga, jel, they wanted to take that one as well. Ne, ne, be, do that. He said to them, this one will not go. Paske, be? Because this one, so, papa, ma, ko, my father gave it to me. So, so I cannot give it to you. I think that was where he was pushing and pulling with them. That was how they took him out to the parade ground, as he said. And they also took that one away from him. They put that inside a nylon bag. At that time, other judges that they were that were taken away from him were also in that in those in bag, and they added it onto those ones. They took the judges away. I asked him where did they take them to. He told me that they dug a hole and they buried them. So all of this information um, your father told you that same evening um, on the day it occurred. Yes, it was when we were chatting. Can you describe your father's disposition, um, how, how he reacted as he was narrating this, um, this to you? He wasn't happy. He was not happy. He was sad. Why? After But when he noticed that I was not also happy, he started to somehow smile. So that uh, I will not feel the pain that he was feeling. That was when he said to me. That all of this is because of my enemies. They've tried all means against me, but they could not get to me. This is the only thing they want to do. They say that it's me they want to make to suffer. He said to me, Jesus wants to make me suffer. But I know who sent him. They are two. Did he tell you who sent him? What he meant by that? Yes, he told me. He said it was the head of state, Yaya Jame. That he was the one who was pushing Jesus onto him. Because the two of them don't like me, and I know that. That was when he said to me, RSM Kuli, that he too, I am, he's, he does not like me. Because one time, I once checked, went on to visit my father at the headquarters. 
parce que je me suis dit que je suis gradué, je suis allé à la maison, je suis allé à la maison. Parce que mon père, quand je suis allé à la maison, quand je suis allé à la maison, je suis allé à la maison pour le visiter. Je suis allé à la maison. I met up with RSM Kole. He said to me, hey, where are you going to? I wanted to say, my father, but before I could say that, my father opened up a door and came out. He said, hey, where are you going to? I wanted to say, my father opened up a door and came out. My father's countenance changed and he was, he was uh, looking very angry. And he said to me, come inside. I asked him, daddy, what is it? He said to me, no, and I insisted, tell me. And he said to me, don't mind this man. This man hates me. And he's not literate. He laughed after and he kept quiet. So from everything that your father told you, he felt that he had been targeted. That's how he felt, right? Yes, he was being targeted. Can you tell us what happened the next day after the um, incident at the police headquarters? In the night, he had told us and told my mom that he was being asked to report the next day to the Secure. office at 8 o'clock. Secure Baba Job. At Baba Job's house. Um, either Kotula or Kololi. It's either in Kotu or in Kololi. Nyari plus, he been a plus than you see. Among uh, between these two places is one place, one of these two that he said. Smaya ni kabul dem. My mom said to him, "Don't go." He said to her, yeah, I will go. Because I'm going there to make myself clean. He said to, he said to her, you see these things, when they do these kind of things to you, go there and uh, extricate yourself. And that is what I am going to do tomorrow morning. Everyone said to him, Daddy, don't go. Now, in the morning, he woke up early in the morning that day, took his bath, put on his uh, haftan. I will never forget that haftan. It was a blue, brooded blue. I was lying in the uh, sitting room. In the bedroom. In the bedroom. Boom joge. When he got up, boom, boom, solo, after he dressed up, my older sister, Mariam, Mariam asked him, Daddy, where are you going to? He said, he said to her, I am going to Baba Joe's house in Kutu. And then he laughed heartily. My older sister said to him, Daddy, don't go. She said to him, because it is not safe. He said, I am going there to make myself clean. She said to him, you yourself said that these people don't like you. And they don't even want to see you. I hope they have not set a trap for you. Don't go. He said to her, I am going. And that was how he just laughed and went away. Do you remember um, what time of the morning this was? You said it was very early. <laughs> How early? Around 7.30 or 8 in the morning. And you said he wore a blue haftan. He did not wear a uniform on that day. Did it? No. After he left um, the house to go to Baba Job's compound, when was the next time that you heard anything from your father? We called him severally. We waited until night time and we did not see him. 
My mother tried to call him many times. Bene yon das mok pajil. My father received the call only once. Mwaha mwa mwa bugata. They spoke sparingly. Shmaya ne kofone kani gude na de kumba. My mama mother asked him, "Where are you, Kumba? It's late." Mwana kama ni fikir Baba Job kuto. He said to her, "I am here at Baba Job's house in Kuto." Why come? What be the fkolon def dal muga? Mene muno tawa rek mute ga telephone. But it's like he was trying to quicken his speech, and he he spoke quickly and then rang off the phone. Bum te ga telephone be? After he rang off. Smaya continue the call. My mother continued calling. The call call. Calling. Kenajil. Someone picked up the phone. Smaya mene ko ne kumba la la chesu majigal. My mother said to him, "I'm asking for Kumba, my husband." Borom telephone be mom la buka wahal. The owner of this telephone is the one that I want to speak to. Mune ko koko mune tawa jamano bi. He said to her, "That person cannot speak to you at this point in time." Bum ko ne koko mune tawa jamano bi. After he said to her, he cannot speak to you at this point in time. Smaya ne ko koko bi mo ba ikiram. My mother said to him, "When he was leaving his house, mung donwa. He was speaking. Duza bele ko mune tawa." Why is it that at this point in time he is unable to speak? Koko after the fajel telephone muna komuno tawa muno tawa re mujel telephone beteko. So that individual just said to her, no, he cannot speak, he cannot, he cannot speak, and then he, he too ran off. Boom de fe lulu. After he did that. Fe kasuma jikari magangi nyo on holiday mungdo nyibi. That time my older sister's husband had came down on holidays and was about returning. Fe kom koko koko garam la. Because that one, that was his in-law. You know how you should do that, go. They said, "Well, let's uh, not uh, reveal things here." You called my Magbi. They called my older sister. Abi. Abi. You called Maria Majata. They called Maria Majata. So my brother Magbi. My older older sister. Mom Amila. Is a soldier. When you call her, you walk her. When they called her and uh, told her. So my Magbi, they could deny you, you demfa. My sister said we are coming so that we will go there. Smaya ne ko hamga fa. My mother asked her, do you know the place? Mune ko dina find out. She said she would find out. Non na gaay deme. That was how they went. Smaya ne ne oru de. My mother said to them, it is not safe. Mune smaya magu jigen bide keren ke yonga hamne taka derenga. My other sister said to her, you especially in the in the service. Kogona kama tse tu masilo liyo smo papa lai dem teni na fadem. And she said to her, I am not looking at that. All I'm after is my father. I'm going. Guide dem mo abi. They went together with abi. Bidya mefeka komuti da. When they arrived, they found him. He was lying down. Se perong wezi suf. On the veranda, on the ground. Bidya deme. When they arrived. Green boy si nyom yuboga wahasmo parek bena green boy jogi fere ne hey. At first abu guide dem nangu nyuwan punyo duga si bunta bi. As they were about to speak to my father, one of the green boys came and interrupted. In fact, initially when they arrived, they would not let them in. When they would not let them in. My older sisters said they were going in by force. That was how they forced their way through and got in. They went and found my father lying on the ground. They called out to him, Daddy. Before my father could respond, green green boy say, "Can any guy say hey, Harne?" One of the green boys interrupted and said to them, "Hey, hold on." You said the father didn't hear me. Let us see if the dad would recognize you. Smart pane ko hey. My father said to him, "Yo yangi vir." Are you okay? These are my children. And he asked him, "What are their names?" My father said to them, "It's Abi and Maria Majata." So my sister, Maria Majata, and Abi. That was when they said to that individual that we want to take our, our father home. And they said to them, "No." Your father, the dad, cannot leave this place until tomorrow. They asked them, "What is what is what's happening?" 
They said he will not leave this place until tomorrow. That, that they were given an order because of the medicine that they were going to drink. My father said to my older sisters, well, if that is the situation, then just go, it's okay. Guide them. So they left? Bring them in. After they left? Before they left, they told them that tomorrow at 8 o'clock you can come and pick him up. Or 9. That was how they left. That early morning and returned back there. How do you know that um, this is what happened at Baba Job's house? Who told you? Interpretation. I'm sorry. <laughs> How do you know about what happened at Baba Job's house? Because my older sisters narrated the story to me. When they returned and we asked them. How did all of you feel that night upon hearing um, this information? We could not sleep the whole night. What kind of thoughts were going through your mind at the time? I was thinking that my father he had many enemies and Yaya Jame was eyeing him for a long time. He has tried different means of accessing him and uh, failed so that he would imprison him, but that too did not materialize. And I said to me, then uh, this uh, one, this one would be the ultimate. I said, but may God I'll make it end peacefully. We will come back to that later on. But you said that night no one in the family slept. No, no one slept. Till the morning. Can you tell us what happened the next day? Well, yes. The following morning, when my elder sisters went to pick him up, my father, in his strength, anyone that knows him truly, know that even while he was in his late 50s, was a very strong man. Very hefty. They carried him like a baby, bringing him inside the house. He couldn't speak. His, his tongue was tied. He couldn't speak. I cried when I saw him. Because he couldn't do anything for himself at that time. At that time, he was weak. They took him and laid him on the table in the sitting room. And when he was being taken in, he was menacing as if he was, being, uh, he was suffering from some pain or being injured. He sat down for some days, he did not go to work, he couldn't speak, his tongue was tied. Because all the time. Because someone that usually speaks all the time, now that he's forcing and forcing himself to speak, his tongue was heavy. After, till after, I found for days, that was when his uh, tongue was uh, loosening up and he was uh, started, uh, he started to speak. So when that happened, did, was your father able to tell you anything about what happened himself, what happened at Baba Job's home? Bilolo Hewe. My father was sad all those days. Why did first But I used to force myself to talk to him. 
Are you still asking, Daddy, what happened where you, you were taken to? But you used to just, to just look at me like this. After me, they were full, they didn't know what you were doing. You used to just look at me like this. After me, they were full, they didn't know what you were doing. And you said to me, well, there, they used to give us some medicine. And this medicine, nobody knows what it is. It's something that uh, looks like kubejaro. He said to me, because there are some people who have drunk it and they were talking out of their senses. Some will be saying that I brought down this plane, I ate so and so person. People have lost touch with their senses. Mm. Apart from what you've described regarding your father's condition, did he experience any bodily pains, for instance? His old body was paining him. He was weak in instantly. The yogur yogur, nani? Come. In fact, the way he was working was not the normal way. At that time, his body was all weak. Was weak. If he wants to get up and my mother goes to assist him, he will tell her, yeah, uh, leave me, my whole body is spinning. Your father eventually returned to work, is that correct? Yes, he went to work. Do you recall if that was a few days later or a few weeks later? Exactly. For some time, I forgot that the, the exact time frame, but I do know that he was at home for some time before he eventually returned back to work. After he returned to work, did he stay um, at work or did he eventually take leave? He was working. He was going and coming. But after. Until after. One day, as we were chatting, he said to me, I don't know, on such days, I will not go to work. He said to me, in fact, I'm going to dash away my uniforms. That surprised me a lot. I asked him, why would you do that, Father? He said to me, because I am going on a 365 days leave. I said to him, Father, that's a long time. 365 days leave. For 365 days leave. I'm just hearing this for the first time. He laughed heartily. He said to me, yes. I said to him, well, that's fine. And 365 days leave, was that something that was approved by the Gambia police force? Wow. Yes. Um, would you say that was some kind of medical leave or was it for another purpose? Medical leave. Um, medical medical leave. They just gave him 365 days leave, right? No, it was not a medical leave. They just gave him the 365 days leave. Can you tell us um, about your father's condition as time went by? As the years went by, he became weaker. He began to lose weight. To lose weight. And then he developed forgetfulness. The, the, the lost memory. He was, he was losing his memory gradually. 
up to date. Mom, at this point in time, ekati, if he gets up, he is being assisted by someone. Tek, if he should sit, someone would do that for him. Si he is constantly sick. Even to hold a spoon and eat by himself is a problem. All his hands are shaking. Where he sits is where he does everything. He was admitted in every hospital you can think of. He was admitted at the Afrimed. He was admitted at the Bafro. Canifing. Canifing. Banjo. Bonjour. Bijilo Clinic, I must not Even Bijilo Clinic, he was once admitted there. So within the span of 10 years, let's say from 2009 mm. until 2019. From what you've said, his health condition deteriorated um, quite rapidly. During these um, various hospital and clinical um, admissions, was he diagnosed with any kind of illness or was he told why his health was deteriorating so fast? My father, each time we go to the hospital, what they used to tell us is that, that the, my father had high, high blood and that he had diabetes too. If he stays there for two, three days, they'll return back and, get, and uh, report that they did not see that in him. Not long ago, he was admitted at Bafro. Mm, nurse we checked. The nurse checked him. They did, they did, um, canifing. At Carnifing, no, sorry. Nurse we checked. The nurse checked him. Because that day, as he sat down, his whole body was uh, disturbing him. We even thought that we would lose him then. We rushed him there. But when we got there, this guy said to me his high blood was 190 something. When we return again, the next day, the following day, the papa na go to na nan garabambi. And my dad did not uh, check any of his medication. He didn't touch anything. Mumwacha. We got there. To 120 something, how much? It went down to 120 something. I cannot remember exactly the number. But I know that a lot of uh, reduction in figure happened. That is when she asked me, uh, does your father have something that is bothering him in his heart? I said to her, Possibly he has, but my father is the kind of person who, even if he had such feelings in his heart, he would not readily share it out. Why ham nani? But I do know that. Dipe bum nani gara bebente? Since he drank that medicine up till date. Sila nyaka wergo yaramam. That was when he started to feel sickly. Paski mom febar yombo kawon. Because he was not the sickly type. Why dipe bum kona nani bebente? But since he drank that up till now, sometimes if uh, sickness comes to him, then they amputate bunti kirgi. We have to lock the door of the compound. Luko mo ida fagi na dem. Otherwise, he will uh, go out and go te, away. Te su deme. And if he goes, the fagi ka di fanan simbe dai. He will be sleeping on the roadside. Nyuko wor. And we will be out searching for him. Wala si police stationi. Or going to the police stations. To the extent that at that time I was working, people would call me and tell me, your father has fallen down here. Well, uh, small friends again, be good guy, get a plans. Oh, my friends will go out in the night and they will find him in some places. Guy, Epco, Endico. And then they will uh, bring him along to the house. 
Voilà, taxi drivers Haris. Or the taxi drivers will find him and then they'll bring him to the house and then when they come, I'll refund them their, their, the cost of their, their travel. Why the madam jail mutu? But I used to take a vehicle. Diko wur. Going around searching for him. This wild of the far door funeka. And, and if that thing come, comes to him, he used to be very wild. He'll be hitting the places everywhere and striking everywhere. Wala mui dore that of the aggressive. Or he'll be beating people. He used to be very aggressive. Earlier in the week, you provided us with some um, photographs as well as a video of your father. Is that correct? Yes. She in Dorte Besu IB. Wow. Yes. I would like to um, put those images on the screen and then ask for your comment on them. The image that we're looking at right now, can you tell us um, when this was taken? This was when he went to Darfur. 2006, 2006, in 2007. In 2006, but he returned in 2007. AU. He went under the AU. And so 2007, 2008 passed, and then the witch hunt incident occurred at the beginning of 2009. Wow. Yes. So this picture was taken. Um, about a year maximum, two years before that. Wow. Yes. Um, can we put on the screen the one that says um, Kumba Slideshow? Can you describe for us what we're looking at um, on the screen? Just take your time, Ms. Jata. These are my father's photos. When he was still strong. And was able to do things for him. Legally present, Lila, right now. This one, is, this one is presently, right now, his current situation. Wow. Yes. And this one is also when he was prior to the witch hunt incident. Yes, this was before they came. This was when he was being promoted. So, if you look carefully at this photograph, the Arasim, Arasim Koli that he was talking about, I think he was, he's the one that is standing over there. You also, during the course of the week, a video was taken um, of your father. He did this video video for Papa. And um, we tried to get from his own words what happened. And you were assisting your father with that. You've already told us that as a result of what happened, your father started to slowly lose some of his memory. But because the family has given us permission to play the video, I will ask them to play it <laughs> and then ask you to comment after. Can I ask the OB van to, OB van to play the video?
After what happened to your father, and the fact that this was in relation to the witch hunt incident in 2009, can you tell us about um, whether your family faced any kind of stigma as a result of that incident? Well, yes. Because we, up to a time, people, people started running away from us. There was a time when we were staying in Serekunda, in Dipakunda. My father, when his uh, vehicles have breakdowns sometimes, he used to tell them to come and pick it up and take it away. So that they would take him himself to work. Sometimes he himself will walk up to there. And they will take him to work. Or if there is anything they have to do, uh, especially on licenses, then call them like questions. They will used to go to him and ask him questions. After he will tell them. Why bully her? But after this incident, when Ben Abislad on gain, there was one day as I was going out. I went up to the highway. Anyone I asked to take me, they would refuse. If a taxi stops, they will say the taxi will not stop there at the side. The others used to tell the driver to move to the other side. The driver will go that way. That surprised me a lot. On top of something that you know nothing about. Once in a while, as you are talking to somebody inside that uh, conversation. Just to make sure that we understand um, properly what was happening. From what you've said, who were the people who would tell the taxis not to stop there? 
Taxi driver. The taxi drivers? You don't have to run the quarter. Those that used to uh, park there at the highway? Not them to have any. That you should go and uh, park at the other side? And that was because um, the taxis would be stopping to either take you or someone from your family, is that right? No, no, the taxi, you got to have 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 how did you understand um, that situation? What was happening at the time? I don't I know that they termed us as witches. That was why they told the taxi drivers not to stop there, and they will not also come to our home. How do you know that they had termed you as witches? What led you to that conclusion? Because they used to say, Kumba's house, me going there, you are the one to go there, and then they'll run away. And what was it like being spoken about in that way? How did you and your family feel? Then We used to feel it a lot. It was painful to put it in. And it's still painful up till date. Up till this, that is still hanging over us. Because once in a while, as you talk to someone, Inside that uh, discussion, he will tell you, I don't know anything. And you know that this individual, you are the one that he is referring to as a witch. So, um, just to make sure that we understand what you're saying. When they say, I don't know anything, is that implying that you know something um, in particular? Wow. Yes. Can you explain it further so that we understand what you mean? That is, that is to say, inside a word of speech, to say that I don't know anything, that is to say, then you are the witch. Then. And these are things that people would say to you directly. Wow, or they will tell you, I go to a particular place, got into a house. Timis fake and you see on the. And late evening found us. Just see bit timis when you do a sibir kir. Around the, the the way, just uh, in that late evening, they were getting into a house. Sibir timis. Inside that uh, evening. Dusk. Dusk. Thank you. Dusk. You get to see me, We were getting inside the house. Kir kir jambo den dunduga. Someone else's house. Mas majarbat. Myself and my niece. Niece. Re koko mune ma yen timis mene doni na hana domange. That guy said to us, you are walking inside this dusk, are you witches? He said it in a manner that sounded as if he was uh, joking, but he did it that way to sound as a joke, but at the same time, hammering the message home. When we came home, came out, that disturbed me a lot, was painful to me. When we came out, my niece said to me, Have you heard what this person has said? If I did not consider you, I would have said something very serious to him. I would have said something to him that will start before. I will never uh, be put off. He's a, a rude uh, elder. He's trying to say, tell us uh, uh, something hidden in meaning. I said to her, I know. I said to her, but don't respond to her, just let her be. I said to her, because that is the extent of her intelligence. 
then make the react send call. I said if uh, the people that they do this to usually react on them, <coughs> then they would not be living today. So do you feel that people treated you and your family differently after the incident, the witch hunt incident in 2009? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was different. I would like to find out from the OV, um, OV van whether we can play the video. Have the technical issues been sorted out? Can we try it again? If not, then perhaps that's a video that the commissioners can watch. Um, <laughs> Um, Mr. Chairman, I I've come to the, to the end of my questions. I just wanted to play the video um, simply because it has some information that Mr. Jata himself was trying to relate to the Commission, albeit with the assistance of his daughter. Um, but I'm being told that there is a technical difficulty and perhaps they can try during the break to solve it and then play the video. Um, but that is the end of my questioning and we do have another witness after the break. So it's either we suspend and try again, or if the commissioners have additional questions, we proceed with that and then allow Ms. Jatta to make um, a closing statement. I leave it entirely um, in your hands. Thank you. Thank you, Council, and thank you, Ms. Jatta, for your testimony on behalf of um, uh, your father and the family. Sorry you. that uh, you had to endure so much uh, suffering uh, and the father um, as well. I, I do hope we get to hear him uh, at some point, either this afternoon or the time that uh, uh, when the technical uh, issues are resolved. Shunas, uh, if you have any questions, please indicate. If not, Ms. Uh, Chata, if you have any closing remarks to make, please proceed to do so now. Ms. Jata, if you Yes, what I would want to say is that the good works of my father and his goodness and his goodness and his goodness for the third time and his uh, straightforwardness in his country and his love for his country is what brought him the condition that he is now enduring at the moment. To the extent that if he gets up, he, he would be assisted by someone. And if he should sit, someone has to place him down. See, God, I'm 69 years. On a man who is just 69 years old. When he was admitted at the hospital, my mother used to spend the night with him there. In the morning, I will go there until night time. So what to live in Jote, my boy for me, I'm fun and I'm on the sofa. Evening time, I'll leave the old man there to sleep, and I will and I will come. Return home until the following morning. Because she too was not very well, so I will used to tell her when it's uh, night time you go and sleep. 
and my elders too, we were struggling up and down. With all his efforts he has put into the development of his country. I cannot talk about the work of the entire police force. But I am saying today that in this country, if I told anything, my father deserves a medal. To show appreciation to him, they saw us well, with my father sitting down in our sitting room. We at the news, we are medals we are being given. Even if, even if he was not able to walk by himself to pick, him, pick it up, his children were here. We, who could have done that? Nobody remembers him. All his friends he had uh, yesterday all have abandoned him. Today, all he has is his family. And many here have gone through school and have completed. With the little salary of Gambia Police Force, my father, with the little salary that he earned as a police officer, that was what he used to pay the school fees of others, denying his family even, giving other people lunch money. Today, all those that he assisted, None remembers him. None has ever come among those that one amongst those that used to help came to my father. Some said to my father, I want to take you to Sweden on holiday. At that time my father was working. diplomatic passport, but red diplomatic passport. My father had uh, a passport. I'm not sure if it was a diplomatic passport or a service passport, but it had a red cover and written on it was diplomatic. He has never used it to travel. And he could have used it to go on holidays. When that individual said that to him, he said to him, I want you to assist my daughter, Mam Jara. Because she just completed her high school. I want, I'm comfortable with her going because I want to stay here and work for my country. One other, of, one other friend of his, probably he is listening to me. I will mention his name because he, he has done something good for him. His name is Sihunjai. He lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He once said to my father, Kumba, what the way, manner in which you are working is very serious. When you retire, that will have a toll on your health. My father laughed and, say, and he said to my father, I wanted you to come to America on holidays. My father said to him, no, I will not go. Leave here my job and go on holidays. He said to my father, just to come on holidays and relax. My father said to him, no. That was how he returned home that night and explained that scenario to my mother. My mother said to him, you won't go on holiday? Won't you go and relax? Kumba, when you are old or when you are retired, uh, this hard work will have uh, effect on your health. Invitation. She asked my mother, do you want him to write an invitation for you so that you could go on holiday? My mother said to him, well, if you don't want to go, then uh, he, said, she, he said to her, yeah, well, then I will tell him. And that was how the invitation was written and my mother went on holiday. Someone that loves this nation, to the extent that he was written to by the UN three times. 
When he was going to Darfur, at the time when Babu Karso had his appointment at Darfur, former DIG, the former DIG, my father too had that invitation. They were the two that had it at the same time. My father returned, re re uh, re re uh, re declined the invitation and said that he was going to return home and work for his country. When he came, I asked him, Father, why did you return that invitation? He said to me, because I am patriotic to my country. It is better for me to work for my country than to go out and work. I said to him, but your remunerations out there is not the same as what you will get here. I said to him, today they are even prepared to take your whole family. So that all of us will go and settle in America. With all the hardship that we are going through here. He laughed and said to me, God is good. So anyone, all of that, anyone that did that for his nation, there is nothing that the nation can give back to him in return. That, that when he gives his back, people are now laughing at him. That when his children give their back, people are, people are pointing at them and are saying, uh, this is the daughter of Kumba. My father used to go and sleep in police stations and people used to laugh at him, do all kinds of things to him. I used to go around looking for him. He used to go to the Serekunda police station. He used to go to Sukuta police. When he, when he loses his way back to the house, I know that they were junior police officers who, who were under, under him. Even their bosses were trained by him. One day I was coming traffic light. at the traffic light. I was spent a long time there. Almost an hour. I was there almost an hour. Then I was sweating profusely. So I went to around the Kotu police station by the Elton. I parked there. I was there. I was discussing there with two police officers. I was saying to them, but today the traffic is very, very congested. I said to them, even after having four officer, police officers, they cannot still regulate the traffic. He said to me, yes, that is the way. I said to them, well, but I know that during the time of my father, he was a lion. The other police officer who was a little bit elderly, he asked me, who is your father? I said to him, Kumba. He said to me, oh, that one was my boss. He said he was my good boss. The other junior officer who was a boy said to me, well, Kumba, let Kumba not disturb us. And said, when uh, he was in the traffic, where the vehicles as numerous as they are now on traffic? He said very, very disrespectful words, and then he frowned his face. I said to him, hey. I said, my father is not your age mate. I said to him, the one that trained you. And the one that trained him. My father trained him. And so I will not stand here and allow you to disrespect him. So if at all, the Gambia police force, where he used to work, if, he, if they themselves do not give him the dignity and honor that is due, and you have some individuals who are still there who have the audacity to disrespect him. What would others who are outside do? It's disheartening. The way we live is hard life. It's hard. 
and this will follow us even to our grandchildren. To be so inside to that. On to their grand, our great grandchildren. Man, no la feel. That is the way I feel. Pas que les bombes happenaient bien tard. Because after this happened, up to date. Lo 2009 la one. That was in 2009. Bes ça c'est y a la tard. Until today. Nous quoi dun dun da talk si bien réumi. We are living that life in this country. Pas que ce moment pas ni ni quoi si bien ça donne quoi je tire. My father, even those that are outside, they give him his honor. Senegal. In Senegal. Then they them Tuba. We used to go to Tuba. Then go salute Bam Aga. They will salute him until we reach. Now DJ I drinks the kojo. They will come and be taking drinks and giving to him. Because he is a good man. Because of his good deeds. I'm not being a senior army officer. There was one senior army officer. Gambia fee. In the Gambia here. They were them bir Sudan. He went inside Sudan. They were them mission. He went on a mission. Boom, you say you talk the water. When he returned back, we sat down and we were chatting. Do you know what he said to me? He said to me, Mom Jara, and I said yes. He said to me, Do you see your father? You don't even know the kind of father that you have. He said to me, We went to Sudan and I was chatting with other army officers. You know, I'm being a guru, Fini, Mufi won 2006, 2007. They said to me there was one man here. He was on a mission here in 2006, 2007. He was tough and dark in complexion. And then he said to them, "Kumbajata." And they said to him, and he has a red, reddish eyes. And he said to them, "Yes." And they said to him, "That man has the heart of a soldier." What do you police? You should not have been a police officer. Boom don yo guy then come may um Ghanaian police then come may send uniform yo koko as gift. When he was returning back, he was given gifts by the members of the Ghanaian police. South African police. The South African police. At Nigeria. And Nigerian police. Rebelli. The rebels. Bir Sudan. Inside Sudan. Then I may want Natalie Yipsa Sikirgi. They had we had all those photographs in the house. Why Bukoli Jogale? But when this thing happened to him, all these photographs I am talking to you about, he took them one day, packed them in a bag, and took them away, and nobody knows where he took them to. Rebels, he made a gamo while he was in Sudan. All the rebels came and partook in the gamo. My father came. Because he was the assistant camp commander before. Because he was the assistant camp commander there. You know, when extra camp commander be then Korea. They said to him, "Your camp commander has been killed." Then Momo Koko Faniko. Rebel time of doing an attack. And he was there with that individual. And at that time, the rebels used to launch attacks. Once the regular guy attack. There was only one time that they attacked. Gala jamu jail no nusela hong. Those Jews that they took away from him. Culture la feeling ko feka. It's culture, and we found culture here. There are some that will put on their jujus, which you can see. There are others who will put on their jujus, which you will not see. What well, I am telling you here, if my older sister Maria Majata were here, and nobody would uh, lie against a dead person. The former, the late uh, director of immigration, Babu Karambu. The late director of immigration, Babu Kanumbu. Man, man, them talk ni officer. I went personally and sat inside his office. Mune masapa gur dega la gur dega. Said to me, your father is a true man. He is really, really a true man. Mune maraga lo dara. He is not fearful of anything. Mune magis na binye mbe Sudan be rebelli nyu attack. He said to me, you see, while we were in Sudan and we got attacked by the rebels. Mune smo pa defa ibilo home bini. He said, my father stretched out his palm like this. Nyu neko nsi gana wam yup. Those, all of those that were behind him, none of them were touched by bullets. People were running and lining up behind him. What I am seeing here is something that is very clear to me. Because my older sister found my father in Sudan. Also, Babu Karambu was also together with my father in Sudan. So you see, there he has protected human beings. I am thanking you. Dylan Santa. And I am giving you the honor. Because Hamona ne best be. Because I knew that this day. Fuck me you. 
must come eventually. Wow. Because yeah, yes. God, God, what are you doing? Because for a man that has worked for his country, God, what set hold God, what bar? A man who has a clean heart, a very good man. Is there any problem? Be you said it happened long ago, like ages ago. Must then go too much. Never know to bab money you gambia fi. You see, even before this problem happened, there was a time which was a very long time ago, where he was alleged that there was one European. To bab money, just my papa. That this European said that my father. Fair coming in mobile traffic. At that time, he was at the mobile traffic. More team and be boys ami. That he and his team, his boys, nyomnyoko torture. That they tortured him. Nyujel foreign currency. And took the Europeans' foreign currency away from him. Therefore, I'm two weeks. My papa didn't look again. It took two weeks. My father did did not report to work. Nyuna denyo investigate matter. They said that they were investigating the matter. Basic court be. On the day of the court. Best bobo sunkiri nyepa tele ewo. That day. Everybody in my house woke up early. Sumaya yangu ni talk. My mother is here seated. Sumaya juk di joy. My mother got up and she was crying. Muno kubul joy. He said to her, "Don't cry." Muno kuluwara amrika yam. And said to her, "What must be will be." Muno koki hamu moko gudi hamu moko beche mus moko gis. He said to her, "This man, I do not know him, daytime or nighttime." Why so fake ne muno lolo am? But if he says that. What he alleges is what actually happened. Then them court be. Then let's go to the court. Sun ma yo bo nak. But if they take me, ngat tapoto halay. If they take me away, take care of the children. Pas kaham na na jigen budegero nga. Because I know that you are a strong woman. Tefeke na yo them court be tam ngai jo nga talk si kirge. And also, if you know that, if you go to the court, you will be crying. Stay home. No na deme. So that was how we went. Feka flip jaju. At that time, Philip Jaju, police commissioner right now, is a police commissioner right now. Guide them to court be. They went to the court. When they went to court, they knew like to Bambi. When they went to the court, they asked the European. Hamgaki. Do you know this guy? And he said, No, I don't know him. Judge, they know him. The judge asked him, You don't you know this guy? And he said, No. Muna ko legalu tanga ne kimo la tocho mudora mo boy sami. Then he asked him, then why did you say that he tortured you, he beat you up, he and his boys, and then took your money away? Then the European said, no, they sent me to him. I don't know this guy. I have never seen him. The judge said to him, then I give you 24 hours to leave this country. So If you don't leave this country, I will lock you up. He was going to his office. They put some magical charm on the on the way to his office. As soon as he saw it, they continued them. He used to continue to go. And then he will tell them, "You are trying means to access me, but you will never get get hold of me." I know that uh, there's not much time. But uh, a lot of things happened. Why, some of you narrate talk to you in future game. But if I want to narrate all, we will not leave this place. Do you meet us? Many, many terrible things. Why you knew the locus of the whole year? But all of these things will return unto God. Smoke balloon there were all the time. My father, what he usually says all the time. Mune Ensa Baji. That he said that Ensa Baji, Jesus. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, Jamie. That they put all this uh, calamity on him, but if they had killed him, it would have been even, even been better. Because one time, because one time, small money at time when don't lack a drug be. That was the time when they were destroying the drug. Activity. And the marijuana. You know, senior officers if you tell far. They had asked all senior officers to be present. You know, then enjoy time. That they had given them time. How much seven or six to get it? I'm not sure whether seven or six. That when that time reaches, they bend the senior officer to it. And uh, any senior officer is not present there. Then you start like that. They will start the burning. See, can I mean you to it? In the presence of those that were present. Bala monyo. Before he came. Mudah fikir laka nen, start nen laka. He found that they had started the burning. Semua pada fanyu before time. My father came before time. Mune magisnga. He said to me, "Now, do you see?" 
They said they wanted to burn. They told us our time, and it was time. Bala time bi. And before the time, guide them laka. They went and burned. Mane kolege lodef. I asked him. So what did you do then? Mure ne mam jara mane kona mune masapa kendo kaya. He laughed and said to me, "Mam jara," and I answered him, "Yes." And he said to me, "Your father, nobody will belittle him." Mune wada matona sumo mutubi. He said to me, "I turned inside my, with my vehicle." Mane kono jara. I asked him how, which way did you go through? Mune mas straight headquarters. He said to me, "Straight to the headquarters." Mune mas straight banjo ladem. He said to me, "Straight." I went to Banjul Street. Mune mas straight. House eni vinya kafe da. Ida maham lugai laka. He said to me, "I will not stand there and join their foolishness because I'm not even. I don't even know what is what is it they want." So lubare bare bare mum yifin jublan ba kusi one. So many many other things, uh, things of. Um, Dama buka tsuma generation. He never took part in it. Agnyo mama kiyo nyo hamban rek ban fosa ngene tla monta ma mai wa bente pas kili nyo dunda wa meet. I want my generation and those that are older than me a little bit to know what I am going through. Nyo ham mo moy kan. And also to know the kind of person that he is. Wa salam jere gen jef. Thank you so much. Yanna len yalla face and hall. May God reward you for your deeds. Kilefa ifi toki vyana leni yala ya gal sun kana. And all the leaders who are here, may God make you live long. Nda ifi toki vyana leni yala de fale pulun boga. And the young ones too, may God give you as you wish. Mangi gerem suma hariti, suma suma yai, suma magi. Thanking my friends, my mother, my sisters. Nyop. All. Vyana leni yala de fale jama. May God shower peace on you all. Haraja ba lege jere jef. Thank you. May God reward you all. Thank you. 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 Thank Jere jef mam jara jata tewal nga sa papa akti turi njabwa tamgi buba haba. We thank you very much again. I'm off for your testimony. Nyong la gerim buba chisede ying fidef. We will now take a... Bala lumade. Oh, sorry. Dama buga gerim kena. Excuse me, I want to thank one individual. I had forgotten to thank the individual. My Fatima Jalo Tambajang. And that is Fatima Jalo Tambajang. Guide and Jerry Umrek. As soon as they took over the state, Mu calls my papa. She called my father. Wata nagmo. And had a chat with him. Legendi fumdeka. Found out where he lived. Mu yone nyusa kumalo. And sent us a bag of rice. Juli dijot. When prayer time reached. Daf ni yoni wana saku malo aksukur. She sent us a bag of rice and sugar. Juli dijat. During the prayer time. Mu yoni sisi mo papa har. She sent my father a ram. Mu wahas mo papa. She spoke to my father. Mu ne smo papa ne dengali ge yare umitorap. She said to my father, "You have worked for this country a lot." Te dika bende la wada dia lonjuka. And today the country has to show his appreciation to you. Mu ne smo papa ne lo buga. She asked my father, "What do you want?" Sma pa mune ko lode hananga wu hamam jara sma dombe, paske mwa mungu ndege telege ya tu ndege. My father said to her, "Well, for that, maybe you could talk to my daughter, Mam Jara, because she was working before and now she is not employed." Tema umaga mi japa lenye matoro. And our elder sisters assisted me a lot. Japa na matoro siman, amna sma yermande. She, they feel my, they have pity for me a lot. Nun la watani akmo. And that was how I got to speak to her. Why don't you want to know them through? But what we discussed did not go through. Why guess not any? But I saw her intention. Family, we pump kogere mdi kusante diko nyana. The whole family thanks her and prays for her as well. At least mom fate leko nako. At least she remembers him. Wow. Yes. Jere genje. Thank you all. Again, thank you very much indeed. Her testimony. You're a wonderful daughter. Yeah, thank you. Um, we will meet um, uh, or we will resume our afternoon session at uh, 10 past 3. Meeting is adjourned.